This isn't a video to stir the pot. That's not my intention. This video is to help direct you on a better path if you're going to build or maybe have somebody else build or buy a horizontal offset smoker. So before we begin, let me start with just defining this cooking vessel that we're going to use as an example for this entire video. So number one, our example is going to be about the horizontal offset of any size, it's a straight flow. The only obstruction between the smokestack exit and the firebox is going to be a slightly angled baffle. So number two, this will not help anybody that's interested in building a reverse flow. A reverse flow offers some other variables such as radiant heat, and radiant heat is when the heat from the firebox starts to warm up other surface areas and assist in the cook, which is not really what we're after, so we're gonna save that for another day number three we're only talking about horizontal smokers this doesn't pertain to vertical smokers and number four our example here will not include any tuning plates or mechanical air or any coin operated gadgetry to assist you in your cook we can start now Ever since the very first 500 gallon offset smoker went out the door uh, for rental, all the way until this current moment right now, I have encountered uh, this. Uh, let's see here. Instagram. Eight minutes ago. From cat underscore 1111. Hi there, we live all the way over in Australia, and we're looking at building our own offset smoker. We wanted to pick your brain. Uh, if I could possibly help. Well, cat underscore one, 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 one. I appreciate your message, but hear me out. This happens 30 to 50 times a week. By the way, you guys got some great barbecue over there. So me and the guys and the girl who runs our office, uh, we're over inundated with messages. And of course, all other platforms of communication. We even have people stop by the shop. And for a really long time, we've struggled to try to maintain a kind of customer service response to all these different messages. Unfortunately, we just don't have the capacity to answer all the questions. Now with this vlog, I hope to touch on subjects like today's topic, which is Felden's Law, or better known as Felden's Calculator. I don't know Felden or the history behind it. Assuming it's named after someone named Felden, I don't want to come off as disrespectful to that person. Having built a lot of smokers, I can tell you I'm confident because of the feedback I've gotten from guys that are in the Texas Monthly Top 50 or uh, nominees for James Beard Awards or have restaurants that are super successful and they're cooking on the vessels that we built. I also have a lot of cooking experience on these vessels or the style of vessels that we're going to discuss today. And of course, I have some growing knowledge of this computational fluid dynamics, CFD, which will also contribute to this argument. So my experience with Felden's calculator goes back to my old shop about six years ago. We were already building what we thought to be a pretty good offset, but I took these calculations to a 500 gallon smoker we were building and we just thought we'll try out the Felden's calculator on this particular unit. When I started to enter the calculations, needless to say, that's when I began to have my objections. So from that point on, I always use the staple answer. If somebody asked me, do you use Felden's calculator? My response was, I feel a more improved environment for barbecue is to look at each individual chamber size independently. I also suggest putting the smokestack at the grate level and uh, adding a collector to where you can pull the air across the grates evenly. The calculator is very restrictive on firebox size and performance. So let's jump into a scenario here for you to see firsthand. So let's say we wanna use the common size of a backyard smoker. It's gonna be 42 inches of chamber space and it's gonna be 20 inches in diameter. So when we go down here to start to input the data into the Felden's calculator, so the first thing we're gonna see is that the general rule of thumb is that the firebox should be about one third the size of the volume of the cooking chamber. So to begin, we're gonna start by looking at, you have a cylinder type, you have a tank, 
and you have a rectangle. We're gonna go with the cylinder type. Uh, we're gonna be asked to input the size of the chamber or the length of the chamber. 42 inch length and we're going to put in a 20 inch diameter and hit apply and if you look over here the cook chamber size is 13,188 cubic inches and the recommended firebox size is 4,396 cubic inches now we're going to continue to throw into the formula to find our firebox recommended size so we're going to take our firebox size which is we're in the round we're going to put the diameter is 20 inches and we are going to put the length of let's say if we go up here and look at the one third that's going to be about 14 inches that's it 14 inches is a really tiny firebox matter of fact it's probably smaller than the split of wood you're using. So that's a firebox that's really small and it's gonna be very difficult to work with. It's also gonna be a little bit of a fire hazard because that gives you a lot more opportunity for coals to escape on the ground. And if it's windy, it could blow it up against a house or a structure and catch it on fire. We're gonna to try to go for a little bigger firebox. I'm going to recommend for this 42 inch grate. And the reason I mentioned this earlier is that uh, it's specific to the size of chamber you're using. I'm going to go, say, a 25-inch uh, firebox. So we'll plug in uh, a, a firebox that, of course, this is a size difference of 100 because that's what they recommended is 14 inches. But we're going to change that. We're going to put in um, a 25-inch firebox, which is 11 more inches than. So we'll go ahead and plug in 25 uh, and then we'll hit apply and now that states we've got 178.7 size differential so we've obviously increased it more than they would recommend and they recommend a 4396 cubic inch uh, firebox and we have a 7853.75 this is kind of where the Felden calculator doesn't really work or make sense in 2019 for an offset or horizontal offset smoker. Let's move on down to the smokestack. Now, with regards to the smokestack, they want 5% of the firebox volume. I will state that their smokestack, if you look at the picture of where they're uh, recommending the smokestack, is up on top of the unit. So when you have the smokestack up on top of the unit, which this may be an old uh, illustration or calculator, but it is going to tend to be obviously smaller. But we're putting ours at the great level with a collector, so we're gonna throw in here a five inch pipe diameter. When we do that, we hit apply. Now you see the recommendation length of chimney. Now obviously that's gonna to be too short, so we're just gonna ignore that. But once again, these calculations are specific for the smokestack being placed on top. So it's really kind of irrelevant for us. Or if you're building a smoker and you don't want to put your smokestack on top. As far as the firebox air inlet opening, you can just keep the back door of your firebox open a little bit. There are some other solutions or you can cut an air intake into your back door. As long as you have plenty of air and the air is positioned to where it's in the opposite end of the smokestack, then a six to eight inch inlet is, is uh, optimal. So in my opinion, we're not getting the results out of the Feldens calculator that we'd want to build a horizontal offset. I feel like trying to come up with a calculator that suits all the different sizes of chambers is pretty much difficult and somewhat impossible. We're really looking into more computational fluid dynamics, which is CFD. And that is, uh, let me read you what Wikipedia says. Computational fluid dynamics, CFD, is a branch of fluid mechanics that uses numerical analysis and data structures to analyze and solve problems that involve fluid flows. Computers are used to perform calculations required to stimulate the free stream flow of fluid and the interaction of fluid, liquids, and gases with surfaces defined by boundary conditions. Even myself, I sit there and go, this is just barbecue. Why do we have to make it so difficult? But I feel like we've got our heads wrapped around something today that would say, we could probably put the Feldens calculator to the side and start thinking about the size of the firebox and the size of the smokestack a little differently. 
I hope this video has been helpful and thanks for your support and I'll see you on the next video.